Hello and welcome to Stampscaping 101. I'm going to try a, a, another snow scene right now. I was just on uh, Pinterest uh, a few hours ago and I saw this picture of these oak trees and kind of a winter scene uh, in the fog. And I thought I'd give it a shot. Alright, this is tack and peel right here. And be sure you save this piece of plastic uh, so you can put it back on here. I had this um, acrylic block with this tack and peel sitting here, and I put a scene on top of it, and uh, it really stuck like, I don't know, stuck like glue or something on there, and it was really tough to get it off, so I don't know, I guess it speaks well to its uh, adhesive properties. Okay, brand new stamp. Sometimes when stamps are brand new, um, I kind of give it a little rub with my hand. Uh, sometimes they use this kind of this resist on the uh, when they're uh, pressing rubber, you know, so that the rubber pulls out of the mold really well. And uh, for the most part, these stamps are, you know, they're pretty much ready to go. But uh, sometimes if it's a large stamp, I'll just kind of rough it up a little bit, uh, just in case there is any kind of uh, residue on it. Uh, sometimes that residue can resist the ink. Not so much on uh, these tonal stamps like this with the, you know, that are kind of more dot pattern than anything, but if you have a, a stamp that has a lot of uh, solid areas, flat, you know, big areas of just uh, solid color, uh, you know, the more uh, surface area it has, the, you know, the more uh, resist that it would uh, have come in contact with, right? Okay, let's see here. Mm. Let's go, let's go up right here. Get a good center pressure. And, okay, a little snowy brook coming down. And let's finish off some areas on the side here with some additional texture. Alright, um, this stamp right here is, is this image, and I'm going to try to match up some of these lines, you know, a little bit. Um, we'll go right here, uh, something like that. Works pretty good, and let's see. Angle this up a little bit more. Let me, let me wipe off some of this edge right here so it kind of fades out a little bit on the edges. Okay. And maybe something in the background. I'm thinking maybe I'll just use the uh, kind of top portion of this and I'll get off the. Uh, remaining ink off the bottom portion and we'll use this going across right here. This is the area right here that I hopefully wiped off pretty good. Okay. I'll do the same thing back here. Maybe I'll take off some more ink off there uh, as it goes back a bit distance maybe it'll become a little bit more faded out. Okay, uh, let's go. One more small layer in the background. Okay. Let's set in some trees now. Um, Should we go in the background first, or in the foreground, I'm asking myself. Take these and kind of build a composition. Um, 
There's a larger one and a smaller one. Uh, you know, I could use the, the larger one in the background too, and what that does is it brings the uh, the background a little bit uh, closer to us um, visually and by, uh, you know, um, size relationships. Or we can push um, the depth a little bit. It's not to say that you couldn't have like a, you know, just a younger tree in the background, but usually, uh, you know, when you have two of the same images, but one's just smaller, it's going to look uh, representationally uh, smaller. Okay, now if oaks are going to be, or trees are going to be in the mist, then this area down here, maybe we want it to fade off. So what you're doing is uh, just kind of wiping off the bottom of this, and maybe if it's kind of a misty scene, maybe we can kind of streak out um, some of the uh, ink, you know, here and there on the image. And let's see, why don't we go about like that. Okay, kind of looks a little icy like that. Same thing again. Take a good take a, take a good amount of it off there. Don't just you know gingerly dab it off, you know. But take a good amount, and then as I move up the trunks a little bit, I'm taking off a little bit less, so it stamps out lighter and then darker as it moves up there. Okay. And if I stamp it. You know, too evenly. It's 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 too. There's too much. Uh, you know, kind of. It's too balanced. Uh, so I, I think I'm going to stamp it up, either lower or higher. Uh, let's go a little bit higher. in the background. somewhere up there. Uh, maybe two. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for one of these um, little snowy uh, hills, and uh, I'm going to mask off one of them, like about like so. And remember, the bottom of this is also kind of uh, lighter because I've removed a lot of ink too, so that'll also kind of create a partition or transition and stamp it out give some good pressure around where your mask is because even though paper towels are real thin um, they are still um, a raised surface so all right um you know they should they should you should go for like a an odd amount of uh, things for uh, compositional reasons, but I don't want to go for another full impression of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I will mask that off that back hill, and I'll just use maybe some of the top portion of this uh, tree, like it's uh, on the other side of that hill back there. I, I don't know. It kind of goes along with this. Um, kind of curving uh, area right here on the design, and then these trees kind of curve off in the same uh, direction, kind of reiterating that uh, I don't know, that that movement of the uh, uh, scene. Okay, uh, let's see now. 
what colors to use on this. I might add some more imagery, by the way. Um, I'm just going to stop right now and uh, see where uh, the colors take me uh, first. All right, let's go for, let's make it a bluish gray uh, toned scene to begin with. Again, I want this to be kind of a somewhat of a foggy looking uh, scene. So remember, if you have fog, you have a lot of uh, this moisture in the air, right? It's uh, the suspended moisture, and uh, it's uh, being illuminated by light. So um, I'm going to be careful. That being said, I'm going to be a little bit more careful on, on this scene. I, I'm not going to take it too dark. Uh, this is uh, an ocean aqua, or an aqua um, color. Uh, Adirondack lights. It's a very light value of blue. And uh, again, it's one of the Ranger uh, inks. And like I said in other videos, I find them to be uh, things to be very um, thick in terms of their uh, uh, texture. And uh, as a result, um, they don't soak into the paper very quickly. So what that does is it uh, gives you time, you see, to really move it around without getting any kind of obtrusive marks, like you know, like something like that, where it's soaked into a, uh, a uh, piece of matte paper very quickly. Um, this paper here. Uh, I should note too is a as a glossy cardstock. Okay, down here in this water, why not go into that and uh, darken up some of that? Maybe the creek there could be a frozen creek or something. And uh, you know, maybe I can color some of that in a little bit. And um, by doing so, it can. Uh, create a little bit of contrast against the uh, white of the uh, snow. All right. And by putting down this first layer, this is kind of the color here that establishes the, you know, what your lighting scheme will end up being because Usually, the areas that I'm, you know, retaining the whiteness of the paper um, ends up being, you know, the areas of uh, light within a scene. I'm not going to get into my darker tones and start going into the white areas of the paper, so the only areas that I end up coloring um, with each um, incrementally darker tone, I'm going to stick to the areas that I've um, established with this first color, uh, for the most part. Okay. All right, so I have a little bit of a oscillating light and dark in here. Starting off dark, lighter, dark, lighter, you know, dark, light. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of doing a, I don't know, what one of my teachers in school used to call checkerboarding. And that's just kind of playing uh, different contrasts off one another. Uh, you can do it with colors too, you know, by changing hue around um, and so forth. Uh, making areas pop with color and with light by putting something dark next to it. All right, this is a vivid pad. I don't know if I've been using these uh, in these videos or not, but uh, really good uh, um, shades of blue from uh, uh, Clear Snap and the uh, the vivid range of uh, ink pads. Um, really great uh, material for their uh, actual pads too. They they just never seem to wear out, and you can use them a lot and and. 10 years or whatnot, they, they still look brand new. 
they still have that same, uh, you know, what's the uh, the word that uh, you know the resilience to the uh, the the fabric. Okay, uh, where does the time go? This is 15 minutes into this card, and uh, I'm just on two colors. All right, I'm gonna have to finish this off in a part two because I'm always getting cut off on these videos and. I don't know, that's probably getting tired for anyone that makes it through uh, 15 minutes of watching a video. So I'll finish this off in uh, part two, and uh, that'll allow me to go in and hopefully add in some other uh, misty effects with the uh, Colorbox pigment ink.